Greetings all, I am Ryder coming to you from the officer's lounge here at the compound. Disclosure today, even though I'm going to present a few of my conclusions in a humorous way, uh, the things we're going to talk about in no way should be trivialized, nor do I think they are anything but serious. So, a few years ago when I was taking my prepper game up a notch, I was doing some research and watching a lot of videos. That's one of the advantages of being in the prepper community. A lot of information online and a lot of videos. That's one of our uh, favorite mediums. Uh, I was watching a video and um, I watched a video of an individual who actually was a little disappointed. He had been prepping for actually a few years and uh, they had a big ice storm come through. Uh, they knew the ice storm was coming. He kind of topped off his preps. He was uh, kind of secretly thinking uh, and kind of hoping it sounded like maybe the electricity will go off for a day or two and I can test out some of my preps and see how things go. Well, in fact, the electricity did go off and it went off for about a week before it re was restored in his immediate area. But he was very disappointed. He broke out all of his supplies. He got his alternative cooking methods ready to go. He got his prepper food ready to go, fixed up a big meal. And the family said, we're gonna drive over to McDonald's in the next town over 20 minutes away. And for six days, that's how they survived. So he wanted to test out his preps and the family went off to KFC, Taco Bell, McDonald's. Everyone was happy as a clam and uh, did their own thing. However, he was a little disappointed and he actually concluded that his preps had failed him because uh, he had prep stuff that the family was not excited about and uh, quite frankly, did not want to eat. So we've had a lot of things going on here in 2020. 2020 is shaping up to be well less than an awesome year. Uh, first, uh, you know, we had the pandemic and the health issue uh, here in the immediate area, in our immediate area, whether it was government overreach or appropriate response, uh, we did have a soft lockdown. Uh, so a lot of, uh, you know, restrictions were placed on non-essential workers. Uh, then we are, and we currently are right in the middle of a significant economic event. Uh, unemployment is, um, is almost unprecedented. A lot of folks have lost their job. Uh, we've got a lot of un unemployed folks, a lot of businesses going out of work. And it, even if things return to normal, even though I think that normal is now gone, we need a new normal, uh, a lot of those jobs will not be coming back. This has been topped uh, with social unrest and a lot of the systemic issues uh, that we as a society here in the United States are dealing with. So we've kind of had the triple whammy. I really feel like it has been SHTF light. So what happens when we get to the real SHTF? How do we know it is here? Kind of goes back to my story. Uh, the guy in the ice storm was prepping and uh, they happened to have a localized event, actually. You know, even uh, the, the grid services, electricity and power were uh, being provided in spotty areas. Uh, his neighborhood happened to be down by six days. Uh, but the areas in the immediate uh, vicinity had their power. So uh, life kind of went on as, as normal as an inconvenience. Uh, but for him, that, uh, that truly was not SHTF because they had fast food available. Now let's go to our soft lockdown with the pandemic. Um, dentist's office, even uh, normal medical services were closed down. However, drive through restaurants and many fast food workers were deemed essential workers. And in my immediate area, we kept fast food open. So even though we were in a soft lockdown, couldn't go to the dentist, even if you broke a tooth and, uh, you know, had a, a minor medical emergency with a broken tooth, you could not go to the dentist. However, you could go to McDonald's. And there was a little bit of that sense of normalcy, even though uh, it was a significant event. 
significant economic event, social event, a uh, significant health event for our country and for the world as a whole, you still could go get your fast food. Now let's go to the social unrest. Been watching a lot of video of uh, the things that we're dealing with in our country. And uh, certainly there's a lot of divisiveness, is that a word? Divisiveness in our country. Uh, people, everyone has an opinion. Uh, everyone's angry. Uh, I don't believe there's two sides to this. I believe that we as a country need to um, find a solution and come together as one people. However, the one thing I have noticed is, as you watch those videos, um, people on, if there are two sides, uh, both, uh, let's just say the protesters as well as law enforcement, there's fast food, people eating pizza, uh, there's fast food um, bags, uh, you know, sodas. Uh, both sides are enjoying their McDonald's during this time of unrest and uncertainty. Uh, so what happens when the real SHTF hits? And how do we know it's here? When is it time to throw up your hands in the air, run around and scream and actually panic? I would contend to you that when the one common denominator, that fast food and more specifically, when you cannot find McDonald's, true SHTF has hit the fan and it is time to take things very seriously. Now, prepper subscribers, I do encourage you keep on prepping. Uh, let's come together as a country, help each other, love each other, make sure that we're doing the right things out there, but keep on prepping. Continue to work on your stacks, work on your skills, and share your knowledge with others. This is I Am Rugger coming to you from the Officer's Lounge. Viewers, subscribers, please leave your comments down below. What have I done well? What can I do better? What can we do better as a country and as a world? And as always, let's be careful out there.